what's good we're back in this thing today we're gonna be going over this omar jones infinite zoom effect it was a highly requested effect a lot of people wanted it i even put a poll up and i'd say two-thirds of the people went ahead and voted for the infinite zoom effect so that's what we're gonna be doing today if you voted for the paper scan we'll definitely get to that eventually this one is just a little bit more requested right now this is definitely a more complex tutorial so if you're not like super familiar with after effects maybe go watch a few other of my other tutorials before you go ahead and do this one it's not too hard it's just there's a little bit more like complexities with it you're like using a 3d camera you just got to like duplicate and like input values and stuff it's a lot of like tweaking things so if you don't know how to like navigate properly through and you're just following the tutorial step by step it's gonna be a little bit harder than if you kind of know what you're doing already with that being said this is definitely a harder tutorial on my end to make so I'd appreciate it if you went ahead and hit the like button and dropped a comment and if you're not subscribed already go ahead and do so i'll wait a few seconds yep go ahead and do that Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Also, if you want to support the channel, the best way to do that is go over to briandelmata.com and check out my texture packs. If you're just hearing about them, I'll have a link to a playlist with all the tutorials on effects that you can do. It's not all the effects you can do with the pack, but it's just a handful of some that I've made tutorials on so far. Like I said, it's definitely the best way to support the channel. Not necessary at all. Just watching is plenty, but if you want to and you want some cool effects that like not many people are doing right now, definitely go check out that playlist and my website. All right, so that's enough talking. Let's get into the tutorial and start with this effect. All right, so I just pulled up After Effects here, and this is the clip that we're working with. What you're gonna wanna have is just some focus point that you're gonna wanna zoom into. So I have it marked out where the chain is still. Ideally, if you, I didn't plan on doing this on this shot here, so I don't have it like centered in the frame, but ideally you wanna do it on a tripod and have the object centered in your screen. I did neither, so you can make it work with whatever. If you wanna make it a lot easier on yourself, that's just some things to keep in mind. So what I'm gonna do is just zoom in and then kind of just center it up a little bit, make it look a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead down here and and click proportional grid what that's going to do is just give a grid so you can kind of see where the center is and then i'm just going to try to center the chain as best as possible it doesn't have to be perfect because this isn't where the effect starts anyways it's just to start off it makes it a lot easier so what i'm going to do is can click Control shift d or command shift d on the mac and what that's going to do is just split the clip in half and then i'm going to hold shift and go back to the previous frame by clicking left 10 frames so what that's going to do is just holding shift and right here is going to give you 10 frames backwards and then i'm also going to shift click delete that and then just move our comp to the beginning because that's where we want it to start. So now you can see it's just zoomed in more and the chain's more in focus and more the center of attention. So what you can go ahead and do is create new, like right click down here, create new and do a camera. Uh, 50 millimeters is fine. All this, if you just have it default, should be fine. You can go ahead and pause and look here. If anything of yours is different, just go ahead and change it and click OK. And then you want to go ahead and make both these layers 3D and turn on motion blur. And if that's not enabled, go ahead and click this as well. And if you don't see these two, you can go to toggle switches and modes until you see them pop up. So next up I do, if you're not shooting on a tripod, what it's going to do is the chain's going to swing around a lot, way too much to actually be able to zoom in on. So what I do, go ahead, right click on here and go to time and freeze frame at the beginning of the clip so now that your clip's gonna look like this and it's just gonna stop and it's gonna look a little weird right now but with motion and a bunch of other effects added on there you won't even be able to tell that it's a still frame and the reason i did that is just because the chain's swinging around a lot and it would just be impossible to go through uh, it's like a tunnel almost so you got to think of it like that if it's swinging back and forth it's just way too hard to do and that's why ideally you want to do it on a tripod so then the next step is clicking on the frozen layer or the layer that you want to zoom into going to the pen tool zooming in and masking out where you want to zoom through so in my case the little pendant part here in the cross and then go ahead to masks and click invert I'm also just gonna add a small little feather, maybe something like five, all depending on your clip, but I think five for me looks good. And to make this easy, what I'm gonna do is go to the front before we start moving around all the uh, layers behind it. I'm just gonna go to the camera, go ahead and go to transform and then keyframe all of these. And then I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit more uh, to the cross so it's a little bit more center of a focus before it starts. So right on the first frame of this, I'm gonna press C on my keyboard so it brings up the camera tools. And this one's gonna allow you to zoom in. And then if you just scroll through by clicking C, it will also allow you to just move this with this tool. So I'm just gonna get something like that, maybe a little bit more zoomed in so we can get a decent start. Cause you wanna be kind of close to being able to see through it. Otherwise it's just gonna look weird. And then just try to center that up as best as possible. And again, it looks really weird because it's still frozen. Since you enabled motion blur and 3D layers, it has that nice blur already on this part. So now what we can do is if we want to close that, we can just go to the layer that's frozen, click control D. And then I just go to the bottom one all the time and go to transform. And then to do the effect, it's easiest if you do numbers that you can just multiply by. So I always do a thousand in the position in the last part of the position here. And you can see that already brings it over there. And then I like doing 
subtracting 10 from the scale. So 179, so it's gonna be at 169. And then you can see it moves it a little bit out of place. So I just go ahead and use the selection tool or click in V and try to center it up with the grid again as much as possible. And if you're having a hard time moving the background layer, just go ahead and make sure you're selected on this, on the background layer or the layer you're trying to move and then go ahead and move it. Otherwise you might be uh, moving the front layer. And then I just like to keep this open and then click control D. And then since it's the same exact layer as this one, I always just do the one that's open just to save time. And then 2000. 159 make sure you select on this layer and then you can adjust it to whatever you like it also does help if you have like a proportional um object to zoom through so if it's like a perfect circle or like a square or something it would be a lot easier like i said it's doable even without a tripod and all this stuff so i'll be showing you how to do that so 3149 just subtracting 10 each time and adding a thousand to the position and then just moving it around if you have a hard time seeing you can go ahead and zoom in to maybe something like 200 percent it doesn't have to be perfect, but the better you do, the less tweaking you have to do later on. So just keep that in mind. 4,139, control D, 5,129, 6,119. And I'm just gonna do seven in total. So the top layer and then seven other layers. So 7,000 and then 109. Make sure you move these, each one. I forgot to do the last one. Just making sure it is as center as possible. And then we can go ahead and play that and just see what that looks like. So now you have all of the layers right here. It does look a little weird. Uh, there's, we'll cover this up in a little bit later, but for right now, you can see that uh, the effect's already basically there. All you have to do now is just zoom through. So I, since you have the keyframes here, I'm gonna go 40 frames to the right. I just found that that's kind of like the best, anywhere from like 30 to 50. Obviously you can do whatever, just keep that in mind for like seven-ish layers. 40 is probably like the ideal spot. So holding shift and clicking four times, one, two, three, four, and then we can go ahead and zoom out. And then I'm just gonna highlight all these layers, control shift D and delete the ones that we don't need. And then we can uh, press N on our keyboard to bring the end here, pressing N on our keyboard and then right clicking and just trimming comp to work area. That just makes it a little bit cleaner for everything. Basically your clip is the length of the comp now. And then I found the best way to zoom through here, the tunnel and make it like a tunnel is just go ahead and go to where it says one view and make it two view. And if your screen goes black here, I'm not exactly sure how to fix it. Normally I just save after effects and then restart it. I don't know if it's a bug or something, but every once in a while your screen will go black and you won't be able to see here. So that's the fix that I found. I don't know if there's another fix. If there is, let me know in the comments. You guys seem to know a lot as well. Definitely help you boy out by doing that. But then what you're gonna wanna do is just zoom in so you can see this camera. So basically what this is, is a view of the virtual camera that we created here from above. So you can kind of just move it along. And if it doesn't, if it isn't from the top for you, just go ahead and click here and move it to the top. It doesn't have to be from the top. That's just what I use. And then you can go ahead and find where it says Z and start dragging it through. And I kind of go slow, just making sure that there's no like mistakes throughout here. And what you want to do is find right where it goes through. So like the last frame you want it to be just going through like something like that, perfect. Then you can turn back to one view and drag those keyframes all the way to the end and then go ahead and render this out just to see what it looks like. And as you can see here, we already have somewhat of the effect. Uh, like I said, you're already starting to miss that this is a still frame now. You can barely even tell. It does look a little off, right? Uh, there's definitely not enough movement or anything going on here, but we're already starting to sell the effect. So some cool effects you can do if you want just to kind of have it a little bit more animated is if you press P on the first one back. So not the first layer, but the first one back. If you press P there, it'll bring up your position. What you're gonna wanna do is just go like maybe one, two, three, five, maybe five frames out. Keyframe it where it's at, at a thousand. And then you can go ahead and enter zero in the position. So what that's gonna do is it's basically just gonna slide back out. You can't really see if you just do one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all of them real quick, making sure that you keyframe each one five frames out and then reset it. To zero so i'm just going to keyframe them all right now and then go back and make it zero on each one so zero 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 uh, zero zero and zero so as you can see here it kind of starts to zoom back you can even like offset them a little bit if you wanted uh, add some easy ease you can do a bunch of different things to make it look cool i think all i'm gonna do is just slap easy ease on all of these for the sake of the tutorial right now it's just a way to like animate it and make it look a little bit more fluid i think i've seen omar jones do something similar i noticed that a lot of people that do this effect do not do something like this though so uh it will definitely separate you from the rest if you do this because i know there's tutorials on this effect out there already but i'm trying to give you guys a little bit extra a little bit extra of the sauce just so you guys can stand out. And just like that, it zooms back. And that's kind of a way to cover up the disappearing of this. But what you can actually do also, I'm just gonna copy and paste the Lumetri color, one second. 
now it looks a little bit better. I was doing it on raw footage, I kind of forgot. But like I was saying, if you want the shirt part in the middle of the pendant to kind of slide back or whatever, I already messed it up a little bit because the point of interest is all the way over here. So a simple fix to that is just duplicate the layer and we can go ahead and delete the mask, go to composition, save frame as, go to Photoshop layers and open it up in Photoshop. Like I said, if you didn't already do all these steps, I kind of forgot about this. You kind of want to do it at the beginning. I think I did it in the effect that I did originally anyways. But anyways, if you go to like rotate it, uh, the point of interest is like all the way down here. It's pretty hard to fix anyways. So it's easier just to take a screenshot of it, bring it into Photoshop, mask it out, and then just bring it in as an image itself. It's not ideal, but it is just a fix to forgetting to do something. Like I said, these are all optional. It just makes the effect look a little bit better. So all I'm doing here is, since it rendered it, all the layers, you only need the top layer. What I'm gonna do is just go to the lasso tool, go around here real quick, just something real rough, cut that, go to select and mask, and then I'm just gonna feather it a little bit. I think we did five originally, so something around there probably looks good. Click OK, Control J, file, save that as a PNG file. I know it's a little uh, clunky the way we did it, but that's just the way I think that we can fix it. Like I said, this is why, like, if you don't know what you're doing in After Effects and stuff, it does get a little weird because this part probably doesn't make much sense to you unless like you're really familiar with Adobe products. But basically what we're doing is just refinding a way to bring this part in and make it rotate easily. And then make sure if you did make a duplicate to delete that. And now we have the shirt. You can make it a 3D layer, keyframe all these things, the default position, and then maybe go 10 frames in and drag it like something like 10,000. That way it goes all the way back there. It should go behind the last layer. As you can see, it fills it out. And then I'm gonna go like three frames, two or three frames before the last one, keyframe the opacity at 100, drag to something like zero. And then on the last frame, also just rotating it four times and some change to see what it looks like. And then make sure you also apply motion blur, that way it has the blur effects. And you can also go ahead and easy ease these. And as you can see here, it rotates through. And then you can see it kind of clips through all of these. And basically all it is is just tweaking. Uh, obviously everyone's clip's gonna be different depending on the size of the cutout and just all the other stuff. So I'm not gonna spend too much time on it. If you want it to not be clipping between these things, basically just scale it down and make it further away. What it does is it just serves as a transition. Uh, so there's not just a random bunch of chains behind there. Like it kind of like makes sense. It kind of like falls back. I don't know if that like is the best way to explain it, but that's kind of what it's doing. It's just, now you can see it just slides back. And if you want, you can spend more time on it. Obviously what I, you see is it's clipping here. You want it to be actually, uh, ideally you want it to be in front of this layer. For right now, I think that's fine. You can change the position and the scale to correct it however you want. Now you can see the effects coming together. We have these chains slide out as that thing falls back. And for right now, that's all you need to do on this part of the effect. What we can go ahead and do is just close everything, just make it look pretty real quick. And you can shift click all of these and then click pre-compose tunnel part one. And then what you're gonna wanna do is grab your secondary clip or the clip that you're gonna have behind it. You play it right now, this is the effect. I've seen people leave it just at this, but uh, I think it's like a little sloppy and just doesn't look as good. So what we're gonna do is definitely add some effects to just kind of tie it all together. But I'll show you what this looks like right now. And as you can see here, here's the transition. Looks a little weird, uh, you know, this is really uh, stagnant the way it's going through. This isn't like scaled in properly when it comes through the last chain. Also, one thing I totally forgot to do is we can just go ahead and go in back into the, the pre comp layer, easy ease the position of these two, and you can go to the graph editor and kind of just have it slowly gain up speed. So what that's gonna do is just slowly ramp up and it just kind of builds a little bit of like momentum almost in the tunnel. You don't even have to use the graph editor, but adding the little bit of easy ease definitely makes it a little less stagnant, if that makes sense. And you can already see how much that changes the look of the tunnel. It just looks a lot less robotic and looks a little bit more like it's like picking up speed as it's going, or actually it's slowing down as it's going, but you get the idea. All right, so next, what you're gonna want to do, go to your clip and go to transform and scale it. So it kind of just fits with the size of the hole and then go to the end and just scale it up its normal size. And I kind of just do like, a few different sets of keyframes here. That way, like you never have the black border and you just wanna bring this last keyframe where it's scaled up all the way. 
and just make sure there's no black bars. So I kind of try to bring it to the last frame before there's no black bars. And if you want, and you don't mind just zooming in a little bit extra, what that can do is just allow you to have it a little bit further, further on, as you can see here, scale it up. And if you just add multiple keyframes, it will look a little bit better. And then what we can do here is just add some Gaussian blur. I drag that onto the background layer, repeat edge pixels, and then just drag that up a bunch until it's like super out of focus. Keyframe that and then go to the last frame-ish and reset it to zero. I just keyframe like halfway, that way you can kind of see the blur getting less and less as you zoom in here. Uh, obviously you can't really see here anyways, so might as well just kind of have it be the same blur. But if you want, and be a perfectionist, you can just drag the blur even more at the start. And then we can start adding some effects to the chain itself, like add some spin. So go ahead and type in twirl and drag that onto the pre comp layer. And I like to add it kind of right where it starts. And then I just like to see what it looks like right off the bat. And you can change the radius, obviously, as much as you want or as little as you want. I think it's cool to start at zero and kind of like right where it starts breaking in, make the twirl a little bit and the radius a little bit bigger, and just make sure we're on the effects so we can see the keyframes. You can see that you already start getting that twirl, maybe even like halfway through the tunnel, increase it just a little bit more. You can even increase the radius, just make sure you're not going past the point where there's the black bars at the top. So for here, I'm actually gonna make it a little bit less, maybe something like 15, and then reset it at the end. You don't really have to reset it, but uh, I think it just adds a cool effect where it kind of twirls and then untwirls. So just reset and click reset on the angle as well. And then you can go ahead and easy ease these keyframes. And then you got a little bit of twirl. I think that just like really sells the effect a little bit more. It makes it look a lot less robotic when it's zooming through. You can also add some things like optics compensation, make sure to reverse the lens distortion. And then I like going like here and going like halfway through and bringing it up a bunch, keyframing it, going to right before it starts and making it zero and then at the end also making it zero. Like I said, you don't have to make it zero at the end, but it's just something I do. Doesn't mean that you guys have to do it, obviously. Uh, so do whatever you think looks the best. And then I'm gonna easy ease those. And it kind of just gives that illusion of it going faster and more of a tunnel-like look. And I think for the last thing, obviously you can add as much or as little as you want. I'm gonna add the optics compensation to the background clip and have it, make sure you click reverse, have it be a lot, and then right towards the end, drag it down. So it kind of just has like a little bit of a bounce effect. Make sure you go to the keyframes. Make sure you actually keyframe it, I totally forgot to. But yeah, make it zero at the end. And then you can do something like here and drag it up. And if you don't even notice it, just drag it all the way up. I don't like dragging it all the, all the way up, but kind of close and see what you can see. I just drag this keyframe closer and closer until we get a look that we want. So I think that's a little too much here. So just bringing it down. And then you can see that we kind of just have like a little bit of a bounce and it looks like it's coming out of a tunnel more. And like I said, boys, it just takes a lot of tweaking, adding your own effects. You can add just like scale it in and have a bump here. You can have a flash when it comes through. You can obviously there's like an endless amount of effects that you can do on each thing, on the composition, on, on the pre-comp layer, on the background layer. Basically just put around and make it look cool. I think some of the really good ones to take away are twirl and optics compensation that kind of just sell the effect because here I'll go ahead and because if you go ahead and turn those both off, you can already see that it looks uh, a lot more robotic, right? Still looks cool, but just definitely not the same effect. If you guys made it all the way to the end. I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. If you haven't already, go ahead and like and comment. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and do so. This video took a while to record, so I really do appreciate it. The best way to support the channel is going to briandelmata.com and checking out my texture pack. I'll have a link to all the tutorials that I have on that so far and some of the effects you can do down below. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitch, even TikTok now. I got the lights behind me, a little bit different of a video now. Uh, but yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for the video. Peace.